what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna check out Jordan Peterson destroying a BBC feminist journalist. At least that's what the title says. Jordan Peterson is one of those guys that just gives me a lot of confidence and value. Makes me feel like I'm leading a better life by listening to him. Anyway, let's go. Men are, in the end, if men are pushed too far by a too aggressive a feminism, there will be a backlash and that there is, you know, there's a sort of undercurrent of, of violence, be it verbal. Oh, that's a warning, not a, not a, that's a warning, not but, a, but it's not a, a commentary on the utility of that. But it's a warning that kind of, of suggests that. that there may be sort of fault in those who push progressivism too far. They will get a backlash. Some people, of course, see that as a bit of a permissive environment for bad behavior. Well, people tend to confuse describing the likelihood of something with supporting the fact that it exists. And I'm describing the likelihood of something, not, not, supporting the fact that it exists, if you push too far on the left, you're going to get a backlash on the right. That's how things work. And this is just a derivation of that as far as I'm concerned. How does that work so, in domestic, in the context of domestic violence? Oh, I don't, I don't think it's applicable in the context of domestic violence at all. I don't, I think those things are, are completely separate issues. I mean, you, you were mentioning to me just as we were chatting. And I was speaking only politically with regards to the backlash. That was that. That was a comment on on political backlash. It had nothing to do with domestic violence. That's a whole different issue. But violence often pops up in in your work as something you think drives things. That you, I think you've said in relations between men are more are regulated by a background threat of force. And in oh, a sense, that's that's absolutely. why men have difficulty with women. Is that really no? So? That's why men have difficulty with women who are completely out of control. But who women should, who have should control women. Well, other women themselves, that men, about society, just like everyone is controlled. I mean, you're controlled by... Control your damn self. That's what I don't understand. Like, in that context, I don't think it's a sex thing in terms of male, female. Control your fucking self. People need to control people. And by that, I mean themselves, not people controlling other people. That's fucking weird. By society, I'm controlled by society, and thank God for that. I mean, it's part of... It's funny, I mean, you, you described yourself as a liberal earlier, and I think a liberal doesn't think that a society controls women or men. Well, let's say regulates. I'm a psychologist as well. But I mean, what is an out-of-control woman? What is this creature? How do we know when we met one? What? Well, I'm sure that you've met women in your life that... that acted towards you in a bullying and detestable manner. It's very difficult for women to cope with that because they don't have any real recourse. And female bullying can be unbelievably vicious. And usually that takes the place of, takes the shape of reputation destruction, innuendo and gossip. It's well documented. It's o very difficult women, to defend. But no, men do it too, but men, no. Oh, but sorry, the patterns, disproportionately women, in any of you or not. Sorry. Yes, when yes, disproportionately women. That's what the data indicate. I mean, if men Where are. Where is the if, data on? Can you let the man the finish his goddamn well, it's thought? It's antisocial behavior among adolescents. Jesus. It's a well-documented field. So, because people look at aggressive and antisocial behavior in women and in men, and in women it tends to take the expression of innuendo, gossip, and reputation destruction, and in men it take, tends to take the form of outright physical aggression. And there's a whole literature on that. It's it's not a surprise to anyone. This has been known for for, for thirty years. I mean, the rates of antisocial... I think the idea of the female gossip probably predates 30 years. Well, it does, it does. By a long does. time, but that doesn't, it is, no, but, doesn't make it gospel, but really, people does have, it? No, it doesn't, but people have looked at how women express... Look, women have to express aggression somehow unless you're willing to say that they're not aggressive. They tend not to do it physically, not to the degree men do, so they use other channels. And what other channels are there other than physical aggression if you're going to be aggressive? Well, you go after people verbally. You go 100%. after them with innuendo and gossip and reputation destruction. That makes sense. I myself am not a huge, formidable dude. If I'm going to have a confrontation with someone, unless my cousin slapped them around, but it's going to be words. So I don't even feel like that's necessarily talking about male versus female. I mean, that's the tendency, but it's talking about, talking about also, this is going to make me sound weird. I don't, I don't know. Dudes that have feminine characteristics. It's like it's the more feminine thing to do to use your words, I suppose, is what he's saying, which makes sense. I'd be more likely to use my words to, con to confront somebody much more than physical aggression. You're a pussy. Destruction. And that's how it that's how it works. And just to be clear, that you think that's predominantly a female modus operandi. I don't understand it isn't what that she's I getting think at. That. Well, I'm it's that the you. clinical literature indicates that. It isn't that I think it. Well, I'm not interviewing the clinical literature. I'm interviewing you. What do you well, think? Well, I'm a psychologist and a scientist, and I tend it. to and I tend to base my opinions on what I've read in the broad, relevant clinical literature. I'm not making this stuff up. 
I studied antisocial behavior for like 15 years. I'm actually quite an expert on it. And so we know that men are more likely to look, look, look at it this way. All right. Women are much more likely to try to commit suicide. And men are much more likely to kill themselves. And the reason for that is that men use lethal force and women don't. Now, that's a big difference. Okay, wow. so then you say, well, women manifest aggression towards themselves and to others, but they don't use lethal force. They don't use physical force the same way men do. So they have to do it some other way. Why well, do they what have the other to ways? do something some other way? That, like, because you can take people are your aggressive. Hobbesian war against, you know, so you're basically a Hobbesian. Life is no, war I'm half and against half. War. Half and half. Half Hobbes, half Rousseau. That's why I'm not an ideologue. Because I don't think that people are good or evil. I think they're both. I don't think that culture is security or tyranny. I think it's both. And I don't think 100%. that nature is benevolence or catastrophe. I think it's both. And that's why I'm not an ideologue. And I mean... And uh, where do you stand on the Me Too campaign? Good thing? I think that it risks damaging the presumption of innocence. I mean, there's plenty of... Is there of more to it than that? Oh, sure. Women, women, women. Is it me or do her questions bug the shit out of you too? I, I don't, I'm annoyed with it. It makes me feel like she's not necessarily receptive to what he's saying and is not offering like any type of valuable rebuttal or valuable thoughts. It's like she, I mean, granted she's the interviewer, so there's that, right? Give her the benefit of the doubt, but she, it sounds like she's just trying to get through her questions. And a lot of times with Jordan Peterson, people want the clickbait shit. People are trying to get him in a trap so that they can post that viral clip. It's like, oh, Jordan Peterson's a bigot. Jordan Peterson hates women. Jordan Peterson said this. It's like... Can't we? I'm tired of seeing that, honestly. Really am. Face the, the arbitrary admixture of sexual uh, advance and workplace, and workplace performance all the time. It's a very complicated thing to sort out. We don't know how to sort it out exactly because, you know, I mean, NBC, for example, the American TV station, has, has made it policy that you're not to hug your coworkers, which, you know, may be true. Although I don't think it's the sort of thing that a corporation might be deciding for people. But we don't know exactly what the rules are for governing male and female behavior in the workplace because we've only been working together for about 35 years. Mm. We, d years. we don't know. After 35 years, wouldn't it be possible to figure something out? Not when you're talking about a... a it, I get annoyed by stupid-ass questions. Wouldn't you think it's possible that we could do that? Yeah, it's possible. Next question. I, I, I don't know. I'm not trying to be an asshole. It's just uh, they're annoying questions. A transformation in behavior that that's, that's that profound. I mean, we don't know how men and women can work properly together in the workforce. It's very complicated. But they men do. don't know how to you compete know, millions with of women. men and women across the world go to yeah, work you together have, day but, in, well, day you, out. But you are the one so, who asked about Me you're Too. The one me who, Too don't is, start with you're the one who. Me Too is a, well, Me Too is an expression of the fact that men and women are having a hard time regulating their behavior in the workplace. It's the only reason I responded to that because the question well, was I think posed. it's more broadly suggesting that, that, that some men are having a grave problem with it. What is the lesson of the Harvey Weinstein story for you? Someone should have said something about Harvey Weinstein much sooner. But we could start somewhere else. We could start with Harvey Weinstein was wrong to do what he did before we get yes, around well, I, to yes, yes. other, well, other people should have spoken game. out. It's fair, just, that's look, the secondary no, no, order issue. Fair enough, fair enough. I thought that went without saying. There are going to be psychopathic predators. They're going to exist. And what has to happen is that people have to stop them because they won't stop themselves. And so I thought that was sort of implicit in the statement. Obviously, he shouldn't have done what he did. But you don't think that the culture in which he was operating, that there was particularly in his in world, Hollywood? In, in his world and in many other worlds, that there was a culture of, you know, let this guy's a powerful guy. He's the great silverback gorilla here. Let him get on with it. Oh, I think that culture was everywhere in Hollywood, which is why I think Not it's just actually in quite... In the world, it seems like. You're powerful. You have status. You have fame. You have lots of money. You can get away with shit. It's just how it works. Different countries, too. I mean, shit, you get pulled over. Yeah, here's 20 fucking bucks. Thanks, let me go. It's like, it's corrupt. And, and that's at a level in terms of the socioeconomic structure of certain places. But that being said, you go to a whole nother ballpark whenever you're talking about individuals, especially those high status individuals. Quite. 
well, Hollywood particularly. I mean, the casting couch idea has been around for a very long period of time. And I think that the Hollywood types who are all upset about this should look to their own devices with regards to the role they've played in fostering the culture that managed that. So, so I know, it sounds like you're, the, the well, Hollywood, Hollywood itself, or the women, think, or who? No, who's no, the entire culture. We, talk, we were talking about culture. Yes. So, I mean, it's certainly that the, the, the Hollywood... But, What's the sensible thing for women to do about me to to your mind? And what's the less sensible thing? It's an interesting question, actually. That That's a hard question. It, it isn't obvious to me exactly what men and women have to do in the workplace to make that kind of sexual predation much less likely with all, also subjecting themselves to restrictions on the sexual element, aspect of their existence that would be unbearable. It's very difficult. What, what would be unbearable about that? How about everybody wears the same uniform to work? That's what the Maoists... Well, look, if you want to eliminate the differences between men and women sexually at the workplace, you have to constrain the sexual differences. I mean, men wear suits to work. Well, we right? don't have to eliminate the sexual differences for people to work together with respect. You have to eliminate them to some degree. Why? So I'm genuinely well, because you're trying puzzled. to... You're try the question here is... To what degree should sexually related behavior be impermissible at the workplace? Well, yes. it depends on how you define it. Should you be able to dress attractively? And if you can dress attractively, what do you mean by attractively exactly? Like precisely? Yeah. I got right, into so trouble. I mean, I, I hope I dressed nicely today. You look very well dressed to me, right? You're a man, I'm a woman. We're both nicely dressed. Now we're getting on with the interview. What's the problem or perspective? Well, the problem, problem is, is, is the boundaries of what constitutes nicely dressed. I also think she's reaching. It's like just because this instance is a civil instance and we're able to carry on an intelligent conversation doesn't mean that that happens for every man and woman who work together. You know? Because mm. there's, look, because part of what constitutes attractiveness, part of what constitutes nicely dressed is sexual attractiveness. Because you can't separate out human attractiveness, sexual attractiveness, from human attractiveness. And so then the question is exactly where are the boundaries? And that's what the discussion is about. Where are the boundaries? The uh, dinner parties, which are described in a foreword to your book, where friends enjoy debates and disagreements. Do you think in the broader conversation we've lost that spirit or in danger of losing that spirit? I think 100%. I think there's a lot of people out there that want to have intelligent dialogue back and forth, but I feel like everybody's so fucking triggered nowadays and everybody's so quick to label people racists and bigots and fem uh, uh, all sorts of things. A any term, they're trigger words. We're so quick to label, so quick to get offended that I feel like essentially intelligent dialogue is dying, which is probably why statistically Kids are getting fucking stupider. I mean, there, there's obviously other aspects as well. It's not just that, but, you know, increased use of phones. You know, that's a whole nother rabbit hole where we go down. It's like, is social media and, well, I guess social media is different from the phone. I was going to say phone use um, leads to lack of intelligence, but there's so much information. So I, I don't know. It goes to a lot of different areas, but it's interesting. Oh, I think... I think we're always in danger of losing that spirit, right? Because lack of freedom is much more probable than freedom. We mm. have to be very careful to maintain that because it's always under threat. Um, but and I do feel that it's under See threat. See right now, here, it looked like she's looking down. Like, I mean, that, that interview, she's obviously prepared, right? She's got questions, but I would almost rather her listen to what he's saying, absorb it, and then be like, all right, one second, let me let me collect myself and get to my next question. Take a pause, look at the questions, then ask. It seems like she's looking down like she's not even paying attention. And Jordan Peterspin, Peterspin, Jordan Peterson speaks very eloquently. So if you're not focused, you're going to miss it. And then it sounds like he's just speaking a bunch of gibberish. People are very careful about what they say in ways that aren't good. I think the fact that many comedians won't perform on university campuses now is a very good indication of that. That's a canary in the coal mine scenario, that. I have no idea what canary in the coal mine is. I mean, the video's over, but what does that mean? An early indicator of potential danger or failure. Ah, uh, okay. Once I start reacting to these type of videos, a lot of people start talking shit. In my mind, these are interesting topics. These are thought provoking topics. I like to think, I like to be challenged. I like to question my own morals and beliefs. I like to instigate thought with other people. It's just a good way 
for us to formulate thoughts because these are the topics that mean the most. These are the topics that are gonna propel our generations going forward. So the more that we think about them, the more time we have to sit and think about these topics, I think it's nothing but good. I enjoy reacting to these, so I'm gonna keep doing it. And I hope you guys find some value in these videos. Drop some comments down below. Let me know what you think. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Peace. <laughs>